What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, the world's number one traditional martial arts podcast. I'm Jeremy Lesniak, joined by my good friend, often co-host, producer of the show, uh, good man and martial artist extraordinaire. Well, yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah, we've spent enough time together. I'm confident in saying all okay. those things about you. <laughs> and today, we are going to tackle the topic, should a black belt or the equivalent be a requirement for someone to teach martial arts. Mm. Hang mm. out. This is going to be an interesting conversation, and uh, we, we, might, we might surprise you on a few things as we get into this. Now, of course, if you're new to what we do, please check out whistlekick.com for all the things that we are putting forward in an effort to get everyone in the world to train for six months, because that is our goal. We're here to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial arts community of the world, no matter where you are or what you train or what your relationship to martial arts looks like. If you want to go deeper on this or any other episode of Martial Arts Radio, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. All right, Andrew. <clears throat> This is a subject that I think has been around for a long time, and I think it's only fairly recently that it's become a question. Hmm. When I was growing up, I suspect as you were too, it would have been unheard of for someone who was not a black belt to teach in a formal capacity, to have their own school, yep. to cover classes when the main instructor was out. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, for, for sure. When I was growing up, we would never have seen, you know, if Sensei couldn't make it to class, one of the other black belts was teaching. <clears throat> and if none of them could make it, class was canceled. Yep. This, this was, this was common. Now, of course, I can't speak for every school, and I'm sure there were schools that did it differently. In fact, on Martial Arts Radio, and during some of our interview episodes, we've heard from a few guests who have said, you know, the high rank when the instructor left or died was a brown belt, and they figured some things out. So, of course, it wasn't 100%, but I also didn't have as much uh, uh, connection to the broad martial arts industry through the 80s and 90s, because I wasn't doing this. Mm -hmm. But everybody I knew, if you were at the front of a room, you were a black belt. Yep, yep. Yeah, and it was the same It was the same for me. It would have been, like you said, unheard of for it to be otherwise. But we're in this time now where it does happen a little bit. And here, here's where I see it the most. I see it most commonly in a Brazilian jiu-jitsu program at a school that has other martial arts as well. Yeah, yeah. We have some good friends that mm -hmm. are not black belts in BJJ, and they teach BJJ. Yep. They, they own their own school. Yep, yep. Now, there are some who, and, and I suspect a lot of those folks will come out of the Brazilian jiu-jitsu community, will point at that and say, well, it, it happens in BJJ because it takes a lot longer to earn such and such rank. Whether, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I was reading through a thread online yesterday, last, last <clears throat> night, about equivalency between, you know, what's a black, what's a first degree black belt in X art versus this mm -hmm. rank over here. And there was yeah, general that. consensus yeah. that in, in BJJ, because of the time, requirements as well as the philosophical require uh, understanding that is generally applied and this is this is me regurgitating you know my my bjj experience was three months right so i do not claim to know anything other than i'm really good at getting choked out uh, <laughs> <laughs> that a blue or purple belt is often an equivalent in bjj to a first degree black belt in a lot of karate taekwondo schools and, and i can i can see that in terms of time and i can sure. even see that uh to to a certain degree with with competence competency so but so there's the box that we're agreeing on it is the stuff in this box that has 
made this question more front and center. Yeah, I think <clears throat> I would agree with you. The first time I that I've started to see it become more prevalent has been in BJJ schools. <clears throat> um, and it's usually a brown or purple belt that's that's teaching. I, I, I've not personally experienced a blue belt running a program. Um, personally, that's not to say that it doesn't happen or not to say it can't happen. I'm just, sure. it's not something I've had experience with, but it's usually a purple or brown belt. So, you know, it, it, I also have very limited BJJ experience, but my understanding is if you're a purple belt or a brown belt, you've been, you've been training five ish years, you know, four, four to five ish years. So <clears throat> that means you've been going to a lot of classes. You already have an idea of how to teach just through osmosis, right? You've done a lot of classes. So, um, yeah, I guess we're, we're basically in agreement. That's what I'm saying. So as, as that question came up and, and became introduced, we started to see a lot of conversation around what is a black belt mm -hmm. and should this and should that. And I think you and I are on the same page that not only is it okay that black belts in one school are not equivalent to black belts in another school, but it's actually a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. And we've so talked it, about, we, we've talked about how, and my feeling is, and I know that you agree as well, your black belt is just a way to recognize within your organization where you are at with their criteria. And this other school could have completely different criteria. And so it's it doesn't make sense to compare one school's black belt to another school's black belt. Right. Right. It, it is it is a level. It, it could be yep. uh, you could equally uh, score or rank with numbers or letters or symbols or animals or anything else out of a set. It's it's a way to <clears throat> stratify internally theoretically to help people understand where they are and show progressions, show um, educational level and assist in their further development as a martial artist. Okay. So if, if, if people get on board with that, then it becomes entirely possible that there are plenty of schools Having a black belt does not mean that you have learned how to teach, even in environments where you've learned all of the material. Yep, yep. In fact, I have said, and I probably said it on the show a number of times, martial arts is the only industry I'm aware of where we expect that competency is correlated to teaching ability. Mm. Every and, other and industry I know of it's it is well understood that okay yeah you know how to do this now go learn how to teach this yeah yeah it's their teaching and doing are very different things i have some and i know we've talked about this in the past that you can be great at doing something and not great at teaching and vice versa you can be great at teaching something but not be great at doing something mm -hmm. and so when we i think when we look at that when we look at this idea that those two are disconnected and that they can exist independently. In fact, how many competitive martial arts coaches were not great competitive athletes or mm -hmm. outside of martial arts? How many coaches couldn't do? Yeah. When I was coaching CrossFit, what's that? I said, yeah, it's a great point. When I was coaching CrossFit, I was able to help people who were far better skill wise than I was because I had a rudimentary understanding of what was going on through because of other movement disciplines like martial arts. And I've got a pretty good eye for movement. Oh, it looks like your balance or your center or you're leading here or whatever. I was able to help people that were several degrees better than me. I could pick up. 150 pounds, I'm helping people pick up 400 pounds. Yeah. 
if we take that back, that concept back into the martial arts, well, I can't pick up 400 pounds. So why would ever I ever be instructing someone on how to pick up 400 pounds, right? That's, that's the, you've got to be this level of experience to teach people below. You would never teach people above. Mm-hmm. There are still plenty of schools where that's a cardinal sin. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, here's the other thing, like, the, we, you, we, back up, Andrew. Zip with the boy. That was me backing up. Um, we, you mentioned earlier that the place that you see it the most often is, is BJJ schools, but I want to add in there, there is another place that it happens commonly where you will have someone who's not a black belt teach, and that's usually tends to be around much smaller schools. Like if you have a karate school that only has one black belt, um, but you've got a brown belt or a purple, or, you know, an advanced rank. And if there's only one instructor and that instructor gets sick or whatever, um, I have it, on, on a regular basis, I've seen multiple schools do this where they don't want to cancel classes for an entire week. And so, because the instructor is sick, so instead he will have one of his advanced rank students teach class, but that student might not be a black belt. So that I just want to recognize that's another place that it happens fairly often. And that's usually a smaller school where there, there aren't other black belts. So if we work from this, if you are a, let's say, we've been talking about belts in BJJ. So let's just continue that belt progression, right? White, blue, purple, brown, black. Okay. If you are a really good blue belt, even if you're a middling blue belt, should you not be able to help a white belt progress? Oh, absolutely. Does it mean you're as good with the material as a purple, brown, black belt? No, of course not. Hopefully not. Yeah. But here's an important aspect that I think is often cast aside in this discussion. Andrew, you've taught, you've taught a number of things. Mm -hmm. when you are teaching do you not also learn oh absolutely and so i've brought this up on the show before by taekwondo instructor i would watch him at times when there were not enough assistants have people who had been training for just a few weeks hey do you remember how to do this movement and this movement can you grab this person for whom it is their first or second day and help them a little bit. Yeah. Is the person who's, who's receiving instruction on their first, second day, getting the best quality of instruction? Probably not. Sure. Are they able to move forward? Yes. But here's another component. The person working with them is also learning more and differently because now they have to teach it. And there's another component in there because there is less of a gap between the two of them. There is a stronger relationship. It becomes more of a peer support peer. relationship. Yep, exactly. That's what I, I was going to say. Often much healthier than this dramatic top down that we tend to have in martial arts. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to bring that up as well that, um, so I teach drumming as well as martial arts and there is definitely something to be said for having peers working together because they, in a healthy, polite way, in polite way, in a healthy way, can challenge each other because they're learning from each other at the sure. same time. In a different way, you know, like I can tell somebody, you know, a, a student, do this, do this, do this. And they kind of get it. And then a peer comes in and says, oh, I'm doing it this way and this way and this way. What's well, exactly what I said they should do but they're hearing it from someone else in a different way. So absolutely. I, I, I don't think we can overlook that peer to peer learning. Yeah. We, we, it, it is well established in the teaching industry, you know, just broadly that the final stage of, of competency comes from sharing that information with someone else, teaching it to someone else. 
in schools where they are less strict about rank and teaching, I tend to see faster progression and less resistance to teaching. I've seen plenty of schools where somebody earns their black belt and they are suddenly expected to teach for the first time. Mm -hmm. That's terrifying. Teaching is a skill. What if all of a sudden at black belt, you were asked to spar for the first time? You're going to be nervous. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. With every other martial arts skill, we progress. Teaching should also be part of that. Now, we have, we had a conversation several years ago with, this was before it was Marshall Summit. This is, I think, our final year of free training day, maybe even the year, the second to final of, of just free training day in the Northeast. Yeah. Where we said, what if somebody without a black belt wants to present a session? Is that okay? Yep. Yeah. Because and that was the first, that was the first year we did it. Yeah. It had not happened before, but that was the first year that it had happened. Okay. Yep. And so that was like year five or six mm -hmm. of free training day Northeast. And you and I had some conversation on that. And, and, and we ended up having roughly this conversation, but in a, a simpler way, a shorter yep. time period. And we said, here's what it came down to. And I think this is where it's going to come down to for you and I here. If you have something that you know that you can share that other people do not know and want to learn from you, why not? Yeah, yeah. I think in this case, what it boiled down to was, um, and it was a red belt in Taekwondo that wanted to teach something that they had knowledge of being able to teach better than most anyone else, yep. <clears throat> whether they were a black belt or not, they were going to be able to teach this class because they were for lack of a better word, an expert in that. They had personal thing. experience on a, a, yep. uh, a specific subject that wasn't just a martial arts subject. It was part of their life, part of their understanding, something they were mm -hmm. passionate about and something that they had non-martial arts, academic and educational experience with. Yep. Yep. And so that was, the, and we decided that, yeah, why would we not let this person teach a class? Because they are better suited to teach this class than most everyone else. And it is a class that people will benefit from. So why would we tell them no? Right. Now, not quite to play devil's advocate, but to to, to kind of take a step to the side and, and, and recognize rank roughly correlates with time, roughly correlates with skill. Mm -hmm. The more time and experience you have with a particular skill means you are likely more versed at being able to teach it than not. If we take 100 martial artists and... 50 of them are black belts and 50 of them are blue belts. Randomly, I'm if I'm if, if I'm asked who do you want to learn from, I'm going to pick the black belt group. Sure. Not for any reason, not because I believe at black belt you mystically become a great teacher, but because there's a better probability that the person I randomly draw knows more and is better mm -hmm. at teaching it than the random blue belt. Sure. But if I have a situation where, let's say I'm going to go train in kendo, in art that I have, you know, two hours of experience in at seminars. <laughs> hey, right? that's about me too. Yeah, lots of fun. I dig swinging a sword. Do I need someone with a hundred years of experience to help me progress? No, absolutely not. Pretty much anybody can help me move forward somewhat. And I think when you start to look at your own progression as a martial artist in that way, things start to change. Who can help me advance in whatever way I'm looking for? Now, that doesn't necessarily mean broad strokes. Who can help me advance in martial arts or this particular style or this system of this style? But maybe it's, you know, 
I want to be a competitive for a, a forms competitor at a national level. Who can help me move forward there? Maybe it's someone who's been there, done that. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not. Yeah. Maybe it's someone who's just really good at watching tape and going, the people who win tend to do X, Y, and Z. The people who come in second aren't as good at X, Y, and Z. Let's work yeah. on your X, Y, and Z. Sure, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it all has to do with what you're looking to learn and the skill of that person learning. You know, that the ability of that person to be able to teach that to you. So I don't know that there's a lot more to say on this. So can we turn the question around the other way? Yeah, please. Should black belts be required to teach? Or is so this enough of a episode? topic? Is that another episode? I, I think because I don't I'm looking at our time and I think we're going to spend another 20 minutes on that one. So yeah. I think that should be a separate episode. Uh, so you know fact, what? We'll record that. Right after. That's next week's episode. <laughs> Stay week's episode. tuned for Stay part tuned. two. So we we would be remiss if we didn't mention that it is because of this idea, this idea of disconnection between time, skill of, of doing versus time, skill of teaching that mm -hmm. led to the creation of Whistle Kicks Matic Division, Martial Arts Teacher Training and Certification. And it, it was a passion of mine that came from recognizing there was a disconnect coupled with Craig Wareham, who's been on the show uh, 42 and a half times. <laughs> if you've been out there a while, you've, you've, you've watched or listened to several episodes with Craig, most likely. And we collaborated on this and we put together what became Matic Level 1. There is now Matic Level 2. We are working on the online version of Matic Level 1 because... For most martial arts instructors, regardless of where they are, they have figured everything out the hard way. Yeah. And so yep. we went back and we created a protocol and, and, and educational system that helps instructors learn how. So if you want to learn more, you can go to whistlekick.com and, and check out Matic and what we're doing with that and maybe sign up for a course. Yeah. I, I feel confident saying that, uh, Taking the Matic Level 1 course will make you a better teacher. <clears throat> That's not to say you're not a good teacher now. It will it will make you a better teacher, period. And, and I, would, I would suggest, why wouldn't you want to be a better teacher? If you're a teacher, why would you not want to be a better one? Yep, good point. We have had people come through that course. And, and you know, this, this is, even though, even though this feels like a commercial, it, it, I think this is also an important concept, right? Just because you're a black belt or just because you're a good teacher doesn't mean there isn't more to learn, right? Mm -hmm. we, we talk about that in terms of martial arts skill. There's always more to learn. There's always yep. more to learn as a teacher. And when we rolled out the Matic Level 1, we trialed it with, I think, eight people. You were one of them. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you had been teaching drumming and martial arts and other things for decades? Yep, yep. We had a 40-year veteran of public school education, mm -hmm. uh, as well as a number of, of multi-decade martial arts school owners, people that, that we knew would give Craig and I honest feedback, Yep. but people that by all rights were fantastic teachers. I'd been in the room with plenty of them learning from them. And to a person, everyone said, that helped me become a better teacher. Not yep. necessarily in those words, but every single person gave feedback along those lines. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because Absolutely. we can always be a better teacher. How do I become a better teacher? By giving that course. Because every time I give that course, I find a way to improve how I'm doing it and mm -hmm. I become better as I'm doing it. And then when I go back and, and I'm working with my students in my school, I'll do something and go, oh yeah, I got that from Maddox. Yeah. Last time yeah. we did it. And sometimes I'll text Craig and be like, ha Right? Because you learn a lot from teaching. Yes. That's what it boils down to. So I, I, I get it. Down. Cool. You don't have to be a black belt to teach. Nope. Boom. Stamped. All right. If you disagree 
We want to hear about it. The best thing to do is join the Facebook group, Martial Arts Radio. You can also comment in various places on social media. You can email us, jeremy at andrew at whistlekick.com. And let us know why you disagree. We are always open to feedback. We are always open to criticism as part of the educational process, part of what allows us to keep getting better as podcasters. If your school does it differently, why? Just because or because we've always done it that way? That's not a great reason for anything. If you want to support us, remember, we have a Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, patreon.com slash whistlekick. You can support this show and get more behind the scenes, all kinds of great extra stuff for as little as $5 a month. Thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. We are not going to name you. That's just not what we do here. Whistlekick.com, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, at whistlekick everywhere on social media. That brings us to the end. Until next time, train hard. Train hard, smile, smile, and, and have, have a great, great day. day. That was horrible. We're out of practice. We are so out of practice on that. Ha, 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 ha.